Good morning. So my name is Jocelyn Marshall, and I'm going to be presenting today over Edvard Munch, um, the famous painter. So um, Edvard was born in 1963 to Christian Munch and Laura Catherine Bolstad in Norway. Later in his life, um, he moved to Os what we know today as Oslo in 1884. In 1886, his mother and later his favorite sister, Sophie, um, they both died of tuberculosis. So um, after that, his dad went through frequent um, swings of depression and anger, um, which kind of led to Edvard um, painting in such a deep tone and just painting in general. It just really led him to, to want to paint. So Edvard was re related to two different artists, um, Jacob Munch, he was a painter, and Peter Munch, he was a historian. Um, Edvard was known to have like a very, um, had a lot of anxiety, um, which led to like a morbid fascination with like death. And it's possible that a lot of his like um, previous like, the things that have happened in his life with his mother dying and his sister dying could have also led to this fascination. So I'm um, continuing on here. Um, Edward had a very frail immune system. Um, he, his dad frequently kept him out of school due to this, um, made him stay at home because he was sick so often. Um, this is what led him to take up drawing and painting. Um, it, he said it helped him pass the time um, throughout the day while he was home alone. It gave him something to do. So um, you may be wondering like, well, where did Edvard learn to paint? Did he just do it? But he actually um, taught himself how to oil paint um, by looking at nor at the Norwegian Art Association landscape paintings. Um, and he would copy those paintings um, and teach himself how to do it. So um, in the 1880s, um, Edvard actually met a man named Hans Jaeger. And Hans encouraged Edvard to um, take his paintings to a more personal and deeper meaning. So instead of just continuing to copy the same landscape paintings, um, Hans said, just take them for more personal experiences. And that will, um, this, Hans telling him that will lead to um, this painting I'm going to show you here in just a moment. Um, then in 1889, Munch traveled to Paris for a fellowship. And um, when he did this, it gave him more of a, um, like, view of different things to see and look at, um, which um, I believe helped his painting career more. So, in 1908, though, um, Edvard had a nervous breakdown, and he was admitted to the hospital for a year. Um, though he was admitted, it did not stop him from painting. Um, actually, he painted and drew more um he just changed his the way he did it a little bit not necessarily the way he drew um but how like what he drew um it changed a little bit and then in 1940 Norway was invaded by the Nazis so um all of Edvard's well most of Edvard's paintings were taken away because they were not approved by um, Hitler and the Germans. Okay, so this first painting we're gonna look at here is called The Sick Child. As you can see here, um, we have this little girl, she's sick. It looks like she's in bed, propped up against the pillow, covered up, she looks ill. Then we have this woman next to her sitting. She looks like she's crying, kind of sad. It's like, it looks like it's representing something. We'll move over here. Um, Sick Child was created in 1885 to 1886. 
Um, it is a painting of his sister, Joanne. Um, that was, like I said earlier, one of his favorite sisters. So I think his her death took a toll on him greatly. Um, it's said to be that the woman sitting next to her crying is her Aunt Karen. We know that it cannot be her, their mother because um, their mother passed before. Um, but it is said to be her Aunt Karen who's crying. And then um, it's also said that this is one of six paintings that Edvard created over 40 years. So the painting that I showed you was just one of um, six paintings that he made of the same painting. So they're all the same, but he just made six different paintings of the same image. This next image I'm going to show you is called The Scream. As we can see in this here, he's walking across a um bridge it seems like and he is looking over um a city or maybe some water it looks in this picture but the sun is setting so it makes the sky orange he looks to be like maybe scared or something or screaming okay um, this is a scream it was made in 1893 it is said to be inspired to munch during a walk one afternoon, which would explain the um, uh, the orange sky. Um, it is looking uh, on a road overlooking the city of Oslo. So um, I read somewhere that um, Edvard was on a walk um, after dinner um, with some of his uh, friends and um, they had walked ahead of him, and um, it is said that he heard the scream of nature, which is reflected by the agonizing face of the main figure in the work. So we saw the guy with, like, the hands on the face, like, screaming. Um, Edvard um, made him look like this because he said that he heard the scream of nature, which um, is why the man was screaming as he was walking over. Um, this painting is made of oil and tempera and um, pastels on a piece of cardboard, actually. This next picture here we have is called the Yellow Log. As we can see here, we're in like a forest of some sorts um, with lots of trees. It looks like maybe this tree's been cut down. Maybe there's a cut down tree over here. Um, kind of like darker, like death looking type of trees um it just looks like the forest goes on and on and on like no stopping at all right so um we see that this one tree is down here and he makes little marks on the side showing that it's like laying in the snow so uh, this this um, picture is the yellow log, like I said before. It was made in 1912. He was actually in Kragers at the time of this painting in a neighborhood and at the nearby islands. Excuse me. Um, he wanted to give this painting a relatively like naturalistic look. Um, he wanted to contrast like the life and the death of trees so like we have the ones that are alive they're up and tall and and big and then we have the ones that are dead the ones that are laying down the ones that have been cut down um it said that um the truncating of the tree in the extreme foreground by the top and bottom edges of the picture plane indicates space continuing towards us and the implied recession of the trees beyond both side borders increased the already great sense of extension imparted by the foreshortened yellow log. This effect leads this, sorry, this effect is to make the forest seem endless in all directions. So he wanted, like during this, he wanted to show that it's like summer alive some are dead but there's just like so much around like it just goes and goes and goes so let's talk a little bit about edvard after his he passed and how he contributed to the art world and um just 
everyone in general. So um, many of Edvard's paintings, like we saw, like the ones that I showed you, contribute to uh, life and death, love and terror, and feelings of loneliness. So after um, Edvard died, he donated all of his paintings to the Norwegian government. And you'd think, like, he might donate to some family or his wife. He was actually never married. I don't really think he had very much family. So he just donated them all to the Norwegian government. Uh, the Norwegian government then took those paintings and placed them in museums, um, different shows that were made, and um, locally around in buildings so that everyone could see these paintings. And then also after he died, um, he what he donated was all of his work over his entire life so he um donated a thousand paintings fifteen thousand four hundred prints that he made four thousand five hundred drawings and watercolors and six sculptures and again these are all things that he made throughout his whole life okay so since he donated so much, like we see here, 15,400 prints, that's a lot. Um, and that's not including all the other stuff he, he donated as well. Um, but since he donated so much to the Norwegian government, they built a museum just dedicated to him with all of his paintings inside. Now, some of them are still in the public buildings and still in shows, but everything that wasn't went up in this, this museum that they actually called the Munch Museum of Art. So it's just kind of my perspective as well as like just some things that I read. Um, but um, Edvard went through like a very tough life. Like he didn't have a lot. Um, his dad was working all the time. His dad, after his mom and his sister died, he just kind of um, like separated himself from the kids, like the rest of the kids that he had. So um, like. Edvard just really took everything that he was going through in, in his life and expressed it out in his paintings. So um, this just kind of, I feel like he's relevant today because like in these paintings, you see that no matter what's going on in your life, like you can express yourself in art and just show how you're feeling in the art. So like Munch shows through his art and through the painting, the rough times, the tragedies they can come through as good things like his art so like he was struggling and he was going through a lot but it brought him his art so and then these are my works cited if you want to take a look through some of the things that i found and some of the different paintings that munch has i appreciate you guys listening today and i hope you have a great day